Before we lifted our praise with our hands or our hands to his work, before we opened a Bible or even walked into a church building, in fact, even before we were created, God was pursuing us, pursuing us with his love. We don't deserve the love of God. We're gossips and worriers, lazy and irritable. We're controlled by our lusts and our appetites. We search after everything except for God. We turn our backs on Him at every single turn. Yet He still comes after us, chasing us, pursuing us with His unending love. Today we're gathered to celebrate the day when God's love took on human form. Jesus our Savior is born this night, and nearby angels sing. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave a sign Bow to babe on bended knee The Savior
in a town not far away, the news of Jesus' birth has spread. A young, inspiring instrumentalist is approached by and a young couple. They ask him if he could come and play for the newborn king. Come, they told me, para ba ba ba. rushes over to see what all the commotion is about. As they make their way towards the excitement, they are overwhelmed with a sense of peace and joy. Not knowing why they feel this, they look at the center of the crowd to see a little baby and inquire. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet and anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds call. Salvation. 
There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. As the shepherd began to make their way to Bethlehem, an angel in the distance began to sing.
Well, Merry Christmas. What a great time of the year that we have going on, and I loved even just coming tonight and uh, before the sun had set and getting to see the trees and how beautiful they are, and that's just a wave of God's finger. And I think that he did that for us for a night like this. Well, would you read with me Luke 2? 13, we're going to continue on from where the team just left. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. And they said, let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all of these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything that they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. Now, every generation seems to tell a story, and, and the world is really quite upside down and not how we would expect. You see, Dorothy thought that she was seeing a land called Oz, but really she was just seeing Kansas in a new way. Alice went down a rabbit hole. Morpheus offered Neo a blue pill and a, and a red pill. One, one pill would allow him to keep in his dream state, and another would then wake him up to reality. Inception, if you remember that movie, left us and its viewers wondering whether they were really living a dream or had they woken to the real reality. You see, Luke 2 provides such a similar affront to our reality today. It appears that this Caesar... The Roman emperor, the son of the divine Julius, who appears to be full in power and in purpose and whose interpretation of the world will dictate people's future. He utters words and things begin to happen at the snap of his fingers, but that's not God's reality. And it's not the reality that Luke is unfolding for us tonight. It's like Luke is offering Theophilus, this gospel audience, the, the red pill like Morpheus does too. Around us everywhere there are contemporary Caesars, men and women of power, prestige, and authority who believe that the sun rises and sets on their decisions, their opinions, and their fortunes. Some of them are merely great in their own eyes. And others are great throughout the whole world. Maybe, maybe you've never thought about this before, and especially maybe on Christmas Eve, that, that these contemporary Caesars can actually show up in our own lives. Yet Caesar is really not in charge. It, it's the same whether he or she lives in the White House or in the Senate or whether or not they have manager written over the top of their doorframe. Caesar's not in charge. God is. It's not the human power that changes the world. It's God's love. And you see, in Christ, God's love has changed the world. If you've been following with us over the last few weeks, we've been, we've been unwrapping presents every week, and, and this week we get to unwrap our final one. I think. And we get to unwrap love. You see, for the last four weeks, we've been unwrapping hope and peace and joy and tonight, we see love. We gather for love. You see, love changes the world and it gives us power. Caesar looks at power in this story, and when we talk about power, we have to be careful. So stick with me. Caesar simply speaks a word, snaps his fingers, and people began to move. A decree goes out from Caesar Augustus, and the world jumps to attention. One of those who jumped was Joseph, and this man was willing to make the trip with his very pregnant fiancée. They obeyed a powerful word from Caesar Augustus, just like we do in different situations, and who can blame him? Everyone was jumping. Everyone was heading to their place. They knew that there was a warning that accompanied Caesar's decree. The census's decree would have sounded something like this. Glory to the most august Caesar, and peace on earth to those whom God august 
is well pleased. Did you hear that, that warning? Peace will come to whom he is pleased with. So, so don't displease Caesar. Didn't you hear that we were supposed to go and have a census, so jump to it, let's move. Now this was a time when every man, woman, and child was to be counted. Both, both landowner and slave, every clod of dirt was to be counted. Every grain of, of grain, every, every seed of grain was to be counted. Every coin was to be counted. You see, everything was to be counted. It wasn't like we do in a, uh, when we get a census today where maybe you get a piece of mail or you get a phone call. They wanted an account for everything. And in this time and day and age, they even accounted for things that didn't exist because, you see, they taxed everything. So if they didn't feel like they had enough, they, they, would, they would torture you and they, and they would put you in positions to, to make stuff up just so they could make sure that Caesar was pleased. But you see, in the face of this reality, on a night like tonight, comes another announcement just like we've been singing about today. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to them whose favor is rest. This announcement follows the announcement of the birth of the real king that we have before us, the, the Messiah, Jesus. You see, Caesar Augustus thinks that he's displaying power, but the shepherds see a true display of power. Caesar Augustus thinks that uh, he is measuring the, the reality of power across the whole empire. But you see, God is displaying his power across the heavens with the stars, as the angels say. Caesar makes his decree, and people jump, and they, they go to different towns. But little does he know that God is arranging the pieces for a specific birth. Now, for today, tw 21st century... Caesars may, may still form of, uh, a power, and, 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 but you know what? It's God's given power. God has given a power of humility and perspective to those who follow after Jesus. Caesar would create a law for taxation, but only God could set the spirit free from the law of sin and death. That's what we celebrate tonight. The love of God is the birth of Jesus because it changed the world. How do I know this? Because in those days, a powerless woman was sent on a pilgrimage for Caesar with Jesus in her womb. Now we are going on a pilgrimage for Jesus with his spirit in our hearts. To slightly paraphrase Andy Stanley, it's, it's people now name their daughters Mary and they name their dog Caesar. We see that the flip has been made. Love changed the world and it gave us power. A second thing is that love changed the world and gives us pride and purpose. You see, Caesar thought that he was doing a work that would last, at least for a little while. But the story in Luke tells us that this was the first census that took place under Cornelius, the governor of Syria. Now, evidently, there was more than one. As, as the empire reached and it grew out and more numbers were needed to be taken and, and more taxes were needed to be drawn, no doubt there would be pride in those performing this important work of the empire. But those are not the ones highlighted in our story tonight, are they? Instead, it is the shepherds. They receive the announcement and they proceed to investigate. Once seeing the site, Luke tells us that they returned. They returned to where? To the fields, to their work. On the one hand, in light of the Lord, their work hadn't changed. But you see, on the other hand... Everything was different. Luke does not simply tell us that they returned, but, but that they returned praising and glorifying God, the scripture says. On the surface, nothing seemed to change. The shepherds went back to tending their sheep just as they had before. But now their, their work was, was wrapped up into something different. Their work was with glory and worshiping of God. The shepherds are not merely shepherds. They were priests leading the worship of the people. And they were prophets speaking truth to the people. We can join in that pride and purpose regardless of our official title. We can take pride in our work that we do. The pride of knowing that we serve the real king. The shepherd's role was not great by human standards, but, 
but it mattered little to them. They, they didn't care that they didn't have a high-profile job. You see, serving the Lord with pride and purpose in tending the sheep was, was a source of joy for them because they were in God's presence. You see, the, the love of God in the birth of Jesus changed the world. How do I know? Because in those days, the decree of Caesar went out to all of the world so that he could take from us. But in these days, these exciting days, the decree of God goes out into all the world so that we can take part and partake in him. Love has changed the world, and God has given us purpose. The third thing I want you to remember tonight as we, as we look at love and how it changes the world, that love changes the world and allows us to ponder. Caesar's decrees will give him a strategic insights into to his own, whole empire of, of where the economic windfalls lie. But you see, the whole realm will have to be counted and the details, they'll have to be arranged to enable Caesar to know what is where and to continue his dictatorship. Just as kings pondered war against other kings, it's no different then than it is now. We see it in scripture in Luke 14, it says this, or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? You see, so if Caesar Augustus ponders his own wealth well enough, others won't make war against him. But in the previous weeks that we've been talking about hope and peace and joy, we see that those hopes were wrapped around a different story. Mary sang of the exalted would be brought low and the mighty arm of the Lord would bring down the arrogant. The judgment was in. Pride and purpose had been given to the lowly and the power had given, been given to the powerless. And now Mary was able to ponder. Perhaps the most powerless person in this story is given the opportunity to reflect, to make sense of everything that she had seen. Perhaps the most scandalous story is given purpose to come to her own conclusion. She treasures these events and she ponders them. It makes me wonder that in the days later that would proceed and the life that baby Jesus would live, that if anyone talked to Mary and if she had thought of these things many years ago. Reed, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. your baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy will walk where angels try? When you kiss your little baby you've kissed the face of God the blind will see the deaf will hear and the dead your baby boy would one day rule the nations did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land this sleeping child you're holding is the great
So as Mary ponders, let us tonight ponder the same thing. As we now have the message that is given to us, we are entrusted with the story of Jesus, the birth of the Christ who is the pure light and the love. It is up to us to ponder, to make sense of our world, to see its battles as, as spiritual warfare rather than flesh and blood. To see the lonely as the needy family of God. To see the broken as welcome into the power of Christ. The love of God in the birth of Jesus changed the world. How do I know? Because in those days it was Caesar who was pondering his empire to see his vast rule. But in these days it is God in Christ empowering us to ponder the world in his purpose and in his mission. Love has changed the world and makes us ponder just like Mary did on that night so long ago. Let us now remember that love that was shown to us on this night. You were given a light when you came in and we're going to dim the lights and we're going to sing a song and the song that we're about to sing is when the, when the lights go out and it, just as it appeared to, to Mary and Joseph that there was a light. Don't turn them on yet. Don't turn them on yet. Just wait. But the light of Christ, as it is re represented, it will be in your hand. You see, the light of hope in a world that seems to have none. The peace that only Christ can bring. The joy that all of the world can see through you. And tonight, we celebrate the love that has been given to each of us. So as the lights dim and we sing Silent Night, wait for me to turn on my light and then we'll do it all together. And we will see how the light of Christ can not only go across an auditorium, but as we leave this place, as the, as the angels told the shepherds to do, we can go singing and praising and glorifying God in the excitement because God has come for you and for me. Let's sing. Sleep, sleep, live in peace, all is calm, so
stand and sing with us? Sleep, sleep, live in peace. All is calm, so sleep. finish out tonight with some more singing. Let it be glad upon our hearts as we leave this place, knowing that, yes, it was a silent night, but it is now joy and joy to the world. I want to offer to you my invitation to hear the word, the gospel being taught, and, and the community to be had at Living Hope every Sunday at 9 or 10.30. If you're not a part of a church, we'd love to have you join us. We're over on 3rd Street, over on 520, in the old Lincoln School that has been repurposed just as a manger was repurposed on that night to hear the word of God in his holy light. As you leave this place, the ushers will, will have buckets there. And if, if you're a part of Living Hope and, and you know that you want to give back as part of your tithe or, or give an offering, that they'll be there to do that. But if you're a guest with us tonight, please don't feel obligated to do that. But take our series card of the next piece that's coming up and enjoy your family and the season and the reason for the season, and that is Jesus. Thank you for joining us tonight as we get to sing a few more songs. God be with you, and Merry Christmas.
Thank you.